Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This is Laboratory Investigation 8, Genetic Transformation. All right, now for an introduction. The purpose is to genetically transform E. coli, it's a bacteria, so that it glows green when exposed to UV light. That's pretty awesome. Now this is taking advantage of another organism, a kind of sea jelly or jellyfish, that has that protein that allows it to glow naturally and when this is you know moving around in the ocean and absorbs uv radiation from the sun it, the way it interacts with the protein gives them this greenish glow and it serves them a purpose in their environment now the bacterium does not naturally have it but when you take that dna out from the sea jelly's genome and put it in a little plasma a little circular piece of dna and introduce it to the bacterium you can get it to accept that dna and express it and that's the key to genetic transformation, literally transforming the genetics of an organism. So materials, five agar plates, this would be per group, uh, but for one group, five agar plates. Now agar is a nutrient source. Um, it's actually from a, a kind of um, seaweed. Um, and it kind of looks like plain jello with, it, with a yellowish tint. Um, you put it in Petri dishes and you would usually uh, take the powdered version, dissolve it, uh, in, in liquid, heat it up, um, pour it, let it cool until it solidifies. Um, you would need an E. coli starter culture. Um, of course, you would need to do this under the supervision of someone with experience, a teacher, a professor, because um, typically with this lab, you would order E. coli that is, excuse me, not as harmful. There are strains of E. coli uh, that typically don't kill a person or make a person sick, and that's what you use for this lab. Now, you still don't want to get E. coli, even from the harmless ones in your mouth. So you have to be careful. Uh, so a starter culture to get the colonies going. Ampicillin, which is an antibiotic. Arabinose, a kind of sugar that helps this lab work. Plasmid. Now this is not something that's easily found. You would have to order this from a company that, that provides the plasmid. And the plasmid has amp resistance. What I mean by amp resistance is resistance against ampicillin. So it allows the bacterium when exposed to the plasma to not die from this antibiotic and it allows them to make what's called the GFP which I'll mention again the green fluorescent protein um, from uh, the gene that was originally in the sea jelly inoculating loops they look like uh, they're either metal or plastic they look like long um, sticks that have a little looks like a little ring at the end um, and they're really good for um, taking it's like making a starter culture where you uh, take a little bit of uh, bacteria from kind of an aqueous um, area, like in a vial, and then you streak it on the plate. Um, and if you were to do this lab in, in real life, you would uh, you know, follow those directions to maximize the formation of those colonies of bacteria. Pipettes uh, to, to suck up um, the materials from the vials you would, you would be using to you know, get the ampicillin, arabinose, etc. Uh, medicine droppers is the same thing. An incubator. Um, you know, heating up these plates to a certain temperature um, will maximize the cell division of the bacteria and make this lab, you know, come to fruition a little bit faster and a UV light for visualizing that green glow. Time required about five days from the point where you have your, um, your, your starting, your, your starting culture of E. coli to the point where you actually can see um, the glowing. Uh, sometimes you can have it happen in as little as three, but it really depends. And like I uh, kind of hinted at earlier with having a teacher or professor supervise you, there's some risk of uh, getting ill or worse with this lab. So gloves and goggles would be required uh, so that if you do get something on your hands, um, you know, it's not going to harm you, um, you know, before you put your hands in your mouth, dispose of the gloves, wash your hands thoroughly, use hand sanitizer, and make sure that uh, nothing terrible happens during this lab. 